Hey, welcome back, guys. Well, family, this is the one we've been waiting for. Thomas Patrick Egan has finally made his much-anticipated return, this time to the windiest city in the land, for more of his special brand of cancellation that has become his trademark. This first installment was a roller coaster of sorts, touching on every major aspect that will define this new series as we progress on through. I'm here to break it all down in typical top 10 WTF fashion. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. And lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. WTF moment number 10, a fork in the road. The episode kicks off with Tommy reliving his most tumultuous moments of Power's initial chapter while driving down a long, dark, frost-induced road. He laments his many losses, including his mother, Kate, Holly, Lakeisha, Raina, Tariq, and of course, his brother in the struggle, the legendary Ghost Man. Tommy's cryptic visions correlate with his increasing speed, nearly resulting in yet another ruin of his signature Mustang. After belting out a necessary scream of relief, Tommy decides to take the fork in the road towards Chicago, a new path filled with new adventures and new opportunities. WTF moment number nine, release date. We're introduced to Diamond cutting his last head in prison prior to release. Upon exiting, one of the friendlier COs blesses him with a fresh starter kit for his widely known profession, something to keep him on the straight and narrow while he transitions from incarceration to freedom. Then, Diamond is picked up by his brother, Jannard, who's just about as Chicago as it gets if you understand his vernacular and dialect, something I personally enjoyed the writers capturing being a Windy City native myself. Diamond clearly exudes the energy of a changed man. He takes pride in the little things. This was exemplified by him giving his Jordans away and waiting in a small puddle just outside the facility that once housed him as human cargo. He is far removed from the same man that entered that prison, and that could be a good thing for him and troubling for everyone else, including his blood. WTF moment number eight, parking predicament. What the fuck is with this city and parking? I can't call it, Tommy. I've been wondering the same thing since I started driving out here in the land. Tommy's one-liner regarding Chicago's parking issues spoke to a larger annoyance given the city's heavy-handed traffic violation system. But in this context, it was credited to Vic Flynn, the heir apparent to Walter Flynn's criminal organization. Vic pulls up on an unassuming Tommy and attempts to get him to move his car. However, Tommy's lack of awareness regarding the Flynn's keeps him honest to his hallmark not giving a single fuck stance, and he rebuffs the otherwise powerful mob descendant. Then, after a few disrespectful exchanges, gun flashes, a push, and even some Boston slander for good measure, all due respect to Larry Legend and Thomas Edward Patrick Brady, by the way, the elder henchman of Flynn's trio implements the tactics of a gangster and a gentleman to get Tommy to remove his whip. WTF moment number seven, back alley beatdown. Simon, Vic Flynn's most disrespectful soldier, allows the coke to get him too aggressive with the fairer sex, including Gloria herself. Tommy peeps the interaction and meets him in the back alley of Gloria's bar to converse with Simon the only way he knows how, with these hands, of course. He also breaks his arm for being disrespectful to the great Larry Bird. Brady, not so much. This ass whooping served as a prelude to the many he'll be doling out during this series, something that we are always here for. WTF moment number six, lifesaver. You didn't think the counselor was gonna let that disrespect ride, now did you? Tommy uses Simon's phone to track down Vic Flynn and threatens his life unless he introduces him to his connect. Be it that Tommy is new to the city and moving weight is the only thing he's ever been good at as he once conveyed to the ghost man, a new connect only makes sense for his solo narrative to really take form. Tommy marches Vic into the abandoned warehouse only to find it occupied by Jannard, Vic's underworld rival, and two clucks high off that shit, intent on robbing all parties involved. Tommy easily discards the crack-inspired duo and departs with both the drugs and the money 
from Vic and Gennardi's payment for saving their respective lives from an obvious double cross. WTF moment number five, grandson to grandson. Tommy pays a visit to the mysterious elderly woman yet again and reintroduces himself to her via a childhood photograph. The woman turns out to be Miriam Egan, his grandmother. She briefly is galvanized by his presence before checking back out into a blissful daze. Then, Tommy is approached by an unknown man questioning his visit to Miriam, who is also his grandmother as well. As it stands, Miriam was Tommy's incentive for making a pit stop in Chicago in the first place. And the unknown man is essentially his half-brother, Kate's secret son who was raised by his father as Tommy was raised by her. After strongly rebuking his mother, Tommy exchanges numbers with JP to catch up once they digested their new normal in full. WTF moment number four, Chicago Brothers Incorporated. Gennard accompanies Diamond to his former barbershop. The shop was previously rented by the brothers. However, Gennard bought the place in his brother's absence and gave it to him as a gift of brotherly love and loyalty upon his release. The joyful moment is briefly disrupted by Diamond's declaration that he is indeed a changed man and random acts of violence won't be a part of his organization going forward. This stance leaves Gennard noticeably troubled and it will only intensify their oppositional perspectives as the season goes on. WTF moment number three, cut 12. As Diamond gets acclimated with this new shop, he's visited by a seemingly random patron. Sensing danger, Diamond attempts to ready himself for the pending confrontation. However, a quick answering of the phone reveals the patron's badge and also his position as a Chicago City policeman slash detective. His acknowledgement of Diamond by name means that this won't be the last we see of him, and Diamond's problems could just be beginning as his old ones are ending as a result. WTF moment number two, the welcome wagon. During a routine exchange with Rodolfo, Tommy is surrounded by a group of black fans. After nearly being run off the Magnificent Mile, the men reveal themselves to be none other than Walter Flynn's soldiers. They escort Tommy to Flynn's fortress at gunpoint to finally meet the man whose name has all but preceded him. In WTF moment number one, enter Walter Flynn. Tommy is formally introduced to Walter Flynn, portrayed by the legendary Tommy Flanagan, who if you grew up like me, you recognize from a litany of films. My personal favorite of his being All About the Benjamins. Flynn offers Tommy a parable of cows, fires, and ultimately swift, biblically inspired retribution for his offenses. Tommy returns the old Irishman's tales with monetary compensation as tribute for saving his life and saving his sons. Flynn then informs Tommy that Chicago can no longer maintain his presence and allows him safe passage from his criminal palace unharmed. Some lingering thoughts before we end today's video. This episode was everything we were expecting and then some from Power's fourth book, action, sex, and of course, violence. Tommy's signature carefree attitude was on full display, even in the face of pending danger. And that's what cemented his current status as Power's undisputed fan favorite. Many of you surely noticed how Tommy was contacted throughout the episode by Rodolfo. In case it's just been that long, Rodolfo was Jason Mitchell's distro in LA. He was introduced back in Power Book 1, Season 6, as a bridge to Tommy's eventual life and times on the West Coast before his narrative was moved to the Windy City due to that unforeseen catastrophic event we know today as the zombie apocalypse, I mean COVID-19. Tommy's final fuck you to Rodolfo brought his new storyline into fruition, sensibly speaking, as well as the familiar revelation via Miriam Egan and JP. It seems as if Diamond already has his hands full in the op department post-release, including from an unnamed Hispanic gang, the Flynn's, 12, and of course, Tommy himself. Though that latter hurdle may not last long as things move forward. Gloria already has my, and I'm sure plenty of you other fellas' attention thus far. She's an alluring one, no doubt. But I wonder at what price does such a beautiful package come with? As Tommy learns more about her past, he's sure to unveil more than just her wardrobe, if you know what I mean. The fact that he clapped her cheeks in the pilot signals to me that she's involved in something that's going to require his assistance to come up from under. And nothing focuses a man 
or should I say unfocuses him like some fresh cheeks, it'll be interesting to see her story bloom in the episodes to come. Speaking of Gloria, one of those aforementioned hurdles is definitely her former relationship with Vic Flynn, whom she has ostensibly replaced with a more seasoned hustler with an East Coast flair. Above all else, the younger Flynn will undoubtedly be pressed by the substitution, and he appears to have more simp bones in his body than player ones. I can't wait to see how that dynamic plays out. The Flynn family are gonna be an interesting case study. You have an undeserving son, an ambitious daughter, and an overarching father focused on maintaining his family's dominance for eons to come. Claudia is definitely onto her own endeavors, which is why I believe she was in that club trying new drugs and inquiring about their source during that steamy romance scene with the unnamed woman. Vic, in my opinion, will have a cane to holler like vitriol for Tommy, who's already gained the respect of Walter just from his audacious nature alone, something that's fleeting within his son on the surface. So that's something we'll keep our eyes open for. As for Walter, his stature may become challenged by his very children as they begin to yearn for more, likely from Vic more so than Claudia, but we shall see. All in all, this was an excellent debut, and I'm already excited for what's to come. And that'll do it for this one. What were your thoughts on Tommy's long-awaited solo endeavor? Be sure to drop me your opinions in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share with your friends who are power fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.